Hey everyone, welcome to Alchemy Stars again. So we have here the limited time Illusory Cloudburst Recruitment. So we have Nina and Sanai. Um, gonna preview their skills tonight. And uh, let's see if they're worth summoning and, you know, worth all your currency to be pulling for tomorrow. So without further ado, let's get it started. Okay, starting off with uh, Nina here. So Nina is a detonator class. Hmm. Uh, I think I'm gonna have a problem with this because in your detonator class, it's really full. You have Azure, Bethel, Regal, and Sharona. So hopefully she has a niche of her own in terms of uh, clearing some of the stages that she can really really excel that much but uh at the back of my mind i really doubt it but let's do her uh, skill review while we're at it so you have here her attack which is 35 6 7 which is on the high side which is kind of good uh, but moving on to her skills okay active skill is going to be nina's fridge downpour cool down one preemptive strike so you can spam this every other turn right parasol mode selects one traversable tile and hurls the parasol at the selected tile dealing 100 percent damage to the tiles along the path and casting her equipment skill once the land once at the landing point then switches to on arm mode okay first impressions is damage is slow at 100 and her equipment skill is Nina's Trove Guardian in unarmed mode. Normal attacks can deal diag diagonally whenever switching to unarmed mode to parasol mode. Immediately deals 200 damage to the surrounding cluster. Interesting. Um, she kind of has a little bit of a, a weird mechanic. <laughs> Uh, for this, um, going back to the active skill, an arm mode reclaims the parasol, dealing 100, 1,000 1, damage to tiles along the path, then switches to parasol mode. Honestly, I can't picture this out. It's I'm 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 saying to myself that every other time she uses her active skill, it's going to be either 100 or 1,000 damage. So can be good, can 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 also be bad. But again, um, I'm 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 looking at kind of a Arya type of kit where where um, she could deal uh, one time big time, then the next damage would be smaller. So I'm looking at it like this. But but the skill cooldown is actually one. So. Kind of good. I'm not sure. Switches to parasol mode whenever the parasol is covered or removed. When it is covered by an ally enemy, the skill's cooldown is minus one uh, slash plus one round. Okay. And going to her chain combo, you have two types when she is in parasol mode and on arm mode. My problem with, with these modes is you have to time them perfectly. That is her kit. You have to time her. She deals a lot of damage, but you really have to time her um, active skill in terms of when are you going to be in an arm mode because that is the biggest damage. And uh, but for this one, also for for an arm mode, biggest uh, um, no no an arm mode is two nearest enemies, while parasol mode is one surrounding cluster. So in terms of chain combo, uh, parasol mode is better, but for active scale, parasol, parasol mode is going to be lesser in terms of damage. So they're switching active scale, paras parasol mode is less, um, chain combo, parasol mode is bigger area, while active scale, um, unarmed mode is bigger damage, while unarmed mode in chain combo is going to be a lesser area or only a few enemies in terms of chain combo damage uh, although for chain combo is decent at 150 160 and 170 
So that is it. Kind of interesting. She is also, I think, one of those setup type of detonators. And I'm not sure yet if she will have her own niche in terms of um, being, you know, having a place in water detonators. You have their Azure, which is crazy OP. You have their Regal as well. Um, side by side with Azure, you have Sharona and you have Bethel. So I don't know which one she will kick out. You only need, I guess, two or three detonators at max. If you have Sharona, Bethel, like for example, me, I have Sharona, Regal, and Azure. I'm really happy with that. I'm not sure if this one is going to impress me in terms of uh, her skill, but we'll have to try her out once she comes out tomorrow. Okay, but for now, I'm saying that her skill should be so impressive that I have to kick one of the four of the top four detonators. So at this point, I'm reserving judgment, but I'm already on the going the downside whether she's going to be good. Yeah, the, the active skill actually rubs me off the wrong way because, again, it has to be timed. Although it has a big damage, it has to be timed. And I don't like those things. I want everything to be available once it is available, not every other active skill. So that is it for Nina. We're going to go to the next, which is Sanae, which is a five star. By the way, Nina is a six star. So that is the difference. They're in the same banner, by the way. So you might be able to recruit nina because she is of five star rarity and but she's also guys as you can see she's also a detonator but the problem as well is her attack which is only 3193 which is on the low side okay competition wise in terms of detonator would be amimori michael and requiem those are i think her biggest competition here um because those are more or less what I have. Um, the other, I think Eve is one as well. But these are, I think, the top three in terms of detonator. So what do you think, guys? So anyway, um, let's take a look at her kit. I don't know if she has the power to remove the, the top three from the top detonators for Thunder. But we will see. Okay, so active skill, Peerless Mana Manae. Uses three thread points to summon Manaya to a selected tile. Okay, so but basically placement using three thread points or uses one thread point to move Manaya to a selected tile. So if Manaya is there, you can move her with just one point. Manaya returns to Sanae at the end of the player's round. Manaya keeps her position relative to Sanae when moving and deals defense ignoring damage equal to Manaya's attack encountered to encounter targets along the way as she is moving. Okay. Manaya inherits 70% of Sanae's basic attack. Entering Aurora time grants the ability to move Manaya additional time. Again, it's a weird, it's really a weird uh, mechanic right now. The way that they are. They are Putting things back and forth with that mechanic. I'm not sure this is going to work, but uh, let's go with the flow uh, for the meantime. Thread point gains four points when entering battle and gains one point at the start of every round. Okay, I don't like, I read at this point, the mechanic is cute, but I don't like how it's it's kind of weird. It, it it's, it's a unique combo. It's a unique kit. But we'll see, we'll see. Chain combo, Galvanic Prison. So this is 2, 8, and 11, 145, 155, and 165. These are on the low side. They should have done 150, 160, 170. And uh, only the surrounding, the area changes from one surrounding cluster, 12 tiles in a diamond shape, and 16 tiles in a radial shape. So that's it. And the last one is equipment skill. Gains one stack of thread mark when Manai deals damage. Each stack increases Manai's attack by two. So she has 70, then plus two of the attack of the inherited of what's deck 70 if she inherited the 70 is equal to 100. Then 
the two percent will be will be derived from the one hundred, not from uh from Sanai. So that is how you compute for this. Up to thirty stacks. So that's uh two percent times thirty up to sixty percent. Not bad. Once Manai gains thirty stacks of thread mark in total or five stacks in a single round, Manai will be able to release chain combo simultaneous with Sanai. So both of them will be doing a chain combo. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I think this is going to be fun. This kit is actually more fun than Nina's kit. So again, even though this kit is fun, I'm I don't I'm not sure if this kit can overtake the three powerful detonators in Thunder. So again, guys, um, we'll see when I when when we test this tomorrow, but I doubt it um, at this point. So I'm going back to the two of them. So again, for tomorrow, we're going to be having this. Uh, is it tomorrow? No, on the 23rd. So it's on Thursday. So on Thursday, we're going to be having Frigid Cold Burst Nina and Illusory Thread Sanai. So I think this is Manai, this little doll here. So again, um unique my, my my reaction to this is unique kits but i don't think they have the power to overthrow the top detonators in their element that's it they they have a lot to compete with the uh, water detonators uh azure Bethel, regal and sharona and also for thunder detonators you have a memory michael and a requiem so those are my thoughts guys i'll leave it up to you whether you're gonna pull for them but if you ask me, I don't think I'll be pulling for them tomorrow. I'm just going to be demoing them and see their potential and probably decide. But I'm leaning towards not. So again, those are my thoughts and those are my review of their kit. So what do you think of their kit? Put them down in the comment section so that we could discuss. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for staying this far. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And take care, guys. Stay safe. This is The Warden, and I'm out of here.